National Park search teams are combing the Grand Canyon for a missing student from Natchitoches. Yeah. On the crime beat, a local man is in jail connected to an attempted robbery of an East Shreveport bank earlier this week. 33-year-old Jonathan Wade was arrested this morning for the attempted robbery at the Capital One Bank on the 6500 block of Uri Drive. Funeral services are set for the four-year-old boy who was hit by a car last weekend. Zaterian Ferguson died of his injuries Monday night in the hospital. His funeral will be at 11 a.m. on Tuesday, April 12th. In Arkansas, a 59-year-old motorcyclist was killed in a crash right in front of the Miller County Sheriff's Office. It happened just before 11 this morning. An elderly woman turned left in front of a cyclist on Highway 71. Thousands of Louisiana college students stand to lose some of the money that helps them pay for school. A bill passed through a state Senate committee that would cap top spending at the current level. What this could mean is in a few years, students have to pay a small portion of their tuition as it rises. But the bill's sponsor thinks that's unlikely. Hainiff said earlier today he wished he would have been notified about that recall. The local sheriff's office held a press conference today showing the metal pieces they recovered. Take a look. Hi. Well, getting something done from start to finish can be a tough task if you're constantly distracted. With more on how to recognize and fix several concentration killers, here's Mary Maloney. In other health news, criticism and a dire warning. The White House Press Secretary Josh Ernst slams Congress, particularly congressional Republicans, for a lack of action on critically needed funds to fight the spread of the Zika virus. Here's Kim Hutcherson. Lacey and Josh Yelvington have two beautiful twin daughters, but there's a difference between them. One was born blind. Treatment is available to help her, but it's 9,000 miles away from their East Texas home, just north of Marshall. Tonight, I go in depth on a family's quest to the other side of the world to give their daughter the gift of sight. Little Caitlin is a typical three-year-old. That made me Caitlin. Yes, it is. <laughs> She's curious, loves playing with her twin sister, Allison. Got wife for sissy. And being a daddy's girl. Her favorite toy, a fire truck, given to her by dad, Josh Yelvington. I'm a firefighter, full-time with Shreveport Fire Department. But Caitlin sees life differently from her family. When the doctor told me that she was blind, I immediately started crying. Caitlin was born with septo-optic hypodysplasia in both eyes. Doctors actually told us, do not name her. That she's going to come out, she's either going to be a stillborn or she's going she's to pass away within a few months. You know, they gave her no hope. We went ahead and named her, you know. We named her Caitlin Faith because we had faith, you know. And uh, our other, other daughter is Allison Grace, you know, Faith and Grace, you know. Allison had no lasting complications from birth, but the vessels in Caitlin's eyes are underdeveloped. She has minimal light perception. Caesar. It's hard watching your child, like at Christmas, um, birthdays, when it's time to wake up and see what Santa Claus brought, and you have a seeing child that is beyond excited, and then you have a non-seeing child that doesn't get it and she's not excited. Mom Lacey quit her career as an EMT to raise Caitlin. Speech therapy, occupational therapy, she has a vision teacher. It's hard on the family, but I mean, it's worth it, obviously. She drives Caitlin to Dallas twice a month for checkups, all while also caring for her twin. I'm living two different worlds in one world. Determined to help his daughter see again, Josh did research, eventually delving into the world of stem cells, an option for Caitlin. Rebuilding her optic nerve, people with arthritis, uh, dementia, MS, Alzheimer's. I mean, they're, they're doing this stuff in studies and actually it's helping people. Stem cell treatments are not approved in the United States. He found a program that has helped children see again, but it's based thousands of miles away in Thailand. Bangkok, Thailand. It's called the Better Being Hospital. It's an IV injection. They also are going to do a directly in the optic nerve stem cell injection. Our caseworker also told us that people from Canada, Britain, all over the world, uh, the Philippines. yeah, that come over there and treat for this for her condition SOD and so it's a real high success rate. They estimate the total cost for travel and stem cell treatments to reach as high as two hundred thousand dollars. If it don't work it don't work. It, it, it eases our minds that we actually tried everything we could. Josh is pulling together his firefighter salary along with two part-time jobs. It's hope. 
You know, it's not a promise, but I mean, it's hope. The community has also stepped up to help with fundraisers. And the family has created a GoFundMe page so far raising nearly $4,000. Caitlin's family is determined to make it happen. They've even taught her how to say hello in Thai. I say what, D? And while the Yelvingtons do everything they can to make Caitlin happy, it's the milestones in life they want their daughter to enjoy. Her to get excited, just like her sister will get excited, about turning 16 and driving, about a first date, having their babies, you know, just the things that we take for granted. Well, the Elvingtons are actually set to go to Asia this summer for the first treatment. In total, plus community fundraisers, the family has raised $19,000 for that trip. You can find their GoFundMe link on ktbs.com. Now, if the treatment helps Caitlin, the family says they want to start a nonprofit that will help other families be able to afford the travel and treatment abroad for their children. Now, the family will have to fly back and forth for treatment at least four times, depending on that treatment. They've been quoted at around eighteen or nineteen thousand dollars for flights alone. But Devin, the family tells me they want to do a video diary of this entire experience with hope that one day Caitlin will be able to watch it. Oh, wouldn't that be nice?